Mr. Uh, I love this. <laughs> well, I traded this morning for a full house, and we're pretty close to doing that. Thank you, sir. Today we, uh, uh, we actually usher in the empowering month of March, the month of forgiveness. And uh, <laughs> Linda and I spoke this morning a little bit, and we thought, you know, as we proceed this month, we may come to the end of the month and decide maybe there's nothing to forgive anyway as we uh, grow in consciousness. And Linda will explain that when she's on the podium. Um, it, has been said that, uh, it has been said that for any of us not to experience abundance in our lives necessitates that we do what? That we what? <laughs> I'm a failure. Work hard. <laughs> Necessitate that we resist our greater good. That naturally we have abundance just by the very fact that we showed up on this planet as spiritual beings on vacation, enjoying the, uh, the uh, physical drama. And so this month is all about what we call resistance, although we call it forgiveness. And, and maybe throughout this talk we'll kind of get to that word resistance. It's very personal. And it's personal because it has to do with no one else but ourselves. This month has to do with our decisions. The decisions we make in our life. So that we can stay in alignment with that which we are. And the decision is this. Do I resist the insidious, compulsive uh, desire for our conditioned mind to live out of memory? I, and if we think about this, uh, uh, they say that we think 66,000 thoughts, but 90% of those thoughts have to do with yesterday. And very few of them have to do with the present moment. So are we going to actually uh, live in the, in the past, or are we going to live in the present moment? We are also on a spiritual evolutionary path. Uh, we mentioned that a couple, three months ago uh, through a talk, that we were there before the beginning that we were present and we were eternal, we were, we were there before time, space, or form. But our duty assignment in this moment, right here and right now, on planet Earth, is to showcase, I believe, the tremendous glory that the life force has in creative powers. That's what our duty assignment here on this Earth. And uh, so what does this mean? This means that we need to release the would have, could have, should have, and start living in this present moment. And by doing that, we're here 100% of who we are. When we're not in that present moment, then we're living in the past. And if we're living in the past, we're shutting out, we call it the ego, we're actually edging out God itself. I like to, when I uh, retire at night, and I've mentioned this before, when I retire at night, I like to give direction to my subconscious mind because I am one with that. And that's my creative medium. And what I say is this, as I sleep, I release all attachments right here and right now. All attachments stop. Tomorrow will be a new day. What this is, means is that I refuse to accept our subconscious mind reliving the experience of my day. I don't need to spend all night regurgitating what happened during the day. I need it released. It needs to be let go. How many of you experience that sometimes? Where you're, you, something happens during the day and you're reliving it through all kinds of metaphors and stories and you're up all night uh, and wake up in a cold sweat. So I think what I like to do, my practice is this. Well, what I need to do is release all that. All attachments stop as I sleep. And tomorrow's a new day. And then in the next morning, I like to, I start the day every, every day, that I'm open and receptive to everything that the universe has to offer me in this moment. And I accept it, I'm open to it with love and, and, uh, and uh, tremendous enthusiasm. Can we do that? And then we set the tone for the day. <laughs> I always work ahead of myself. Um, Colin, uh, Colin Tippin, who uh, wrote the book uh, Radical Reliance, uh, Radical, uh, forgiveness. Uh, Radical Forgiveness, uh, mentioned that the bottom line is this. 
if, if we uh, do not, if we live in the, in the past, what happens is that our life experience is like a filter. We are blessed to have this life force flowing through our lives. Uh, and when we, when we live in forgiveness, what we're doing, we're regurgitating the negative, the anger, and the, and the nonsense of the past. And what happens is it's like a filter. And what to Colin Tippin told us is this, that we need, we're like a furnace. Our, our life is like a, a, a furnace with all the uh, filters and all that. And, and the filters have to be cleaned so that the cold air and the fresh air can flow through. And then uh, our life experience is like that. When we live in anger, resentment, uh, we actually block, block out and, and clog up what we call the subtle body, our physical body. Now we may say, well, let's think out, outside the box. <coughs> We're more than just this physical body. Uh, mystics tell us that there are several bodies, subtle bodies that, that enhance our life, that, that it expresses itself through us. And it's our connection to spirit itself. So all these subtle bodies, if we do not, they have to, to be, for it to, to come through and to provide us the communication that we have, the connection to spirit. They can't be clogged up. When we live in fear and anxiety and negative uh, situations, what we do, we clog it up. It's like clogging up the filters on, a, on our heating unit. And we know that if we don't clean the filters out occasionally, what happens is the air can't flow through. And we end up uh, clogging up. And we're cutting off the, the tremendous life form that we are, this life, life flow that we call God itself. Uh, there's a story uh, uh, about this man who, his, uh, he was really suffering. He went to uh, his therapist and he said, you know, I'm suffering because I can't get over the, the negative aspects of my mother when she was alive. 